Um, so I think we're good. Okay. Hopefully this doesn't take two hours. No, it shouldn't. For, for everyone's sake. <laughs> Okay. I think uh, even Sage messaged me and he's like, not able to make it today. Uh, oh, just, darn it. I was hoping he'd be here. I know he's one of the biggest, probably, proponents of, of no good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and hopefully, oh, here's Jeremy Bennett too. I see he's in. I'll let him in. He's uh, he's pretty involved in the journey. I think he was yeah. one of the first ones to get the pentagram. Oh, really? Yeah. No. Yeah, it even looks like he might have the like fire, one of the fire like wolf things from Papua New Guinea. Like, yeah. Profile pic or whatever. Nice. Okay, well. It looks like we're live on YouTube here. Sweet. That's cool. I'm just drop it in the chat just in case anybody wants to flip over there. But all right. Well, um, I'm going to press record on the Zoom. And then. All right. Now that we're recording. <laughs> now do we. Uh... I guess I'll get all official here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some people that have jumped in to the call. Got Broven on the call today. Get to get to know him a little bit more. Um, dive into Pup to No Good, the creation process of how that all came about. I don't know, like anybody listening, you know, if you've been following along in this journey, you've seen the story, the graphics, the puzzles, like. It's it's been so cool to follow along, Groven. Like just impressed with the flow of the story and how everything ties together. And then of course the puzzles always stump us for, you know, it's <laughs> I think the metal one was the hardest that stumped everybody. It got everybody for like a week or two, or and then there finally had to be some like heavy hints. <laughs> and <laughs> um and so that was that was a good one. Um, but yeah, it's it's been fun to follow along. And so if we uh We'll get to Pup to No Good and let everybody get, give their input or ask questions or whatever. But let's, um, most of the people I see on the call right now probably have seen your name around, um, you know, TGA and Wolf Den for, for a long time, but maybe don't really know too much about Broven. You know, like uh, you haven't been a public face. You Like you said, you were a little nervous about coming on live here, but um yeah, maybe let's jump in there and you can just fill us in on however much you want to share with everybody. Sure. Um, are there specific questions you wanted to ask or do you want me to just give like a brief intro about yeah, whatever? Yeah, give a brief intro about whatever and then I'll then I'll take it from there. Okay. <laughs> See if sure. I need to poke any harder or not. <laughs> All right. So uh, Dwayne has asked me earlier today if my real name is Broven. It is not. Um, it is a alias that uh, me and some friends created way back in college, and it kind of just stuck. Um, so to kind of give you guys, I guess, some history on my background, I'm not a story writer or puzzle maker by, uh, <laughs> by trade. Uh, or even I know there's a lot of kind of like coaches and stuff like that within the space, but I'm also not from that background. Uh, I'm actually by trade at least an infectious diseases pharmacist, <laughs> which is <laughs> probably not what you guys would have expected. Um, but I knew actually Doc Kev from college. And so when he started getting all crazy with this crypto web three stuff, I kind of started following along. And uh, I guess in the beginning, I was really involved kind of in the community um, and then there was like a job posting for looking for an additional team member. And so I just applied and here I am today. Uh, again, no real creative background per se, but it, I, I think my personality likes to try new things. Um, I always kind of consider myself a jack of all trades, but master of none. Um, and so 
anything from, you know, website designing, which I had no real background in, um, and now creating puzzles and riddles and all that stuff. I just think trying new things is really fun. And I, I like the not monotonous creativity of it all. So kind of like every day is a different day. And so mm. it's just kind of fun for me. Yeah, there's never probably a shortage of stuff to do inside the ecosystem. So, you know, it's <laughs> always like pushing the limits of, uh, can I do this? I don't know. Let's go try and build a medium article or write a medium article or whatever. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, so like what, so basically the proximity, you know, you got into the ecosystem, um, got involved, been around the team and then, you know, just being in that proximity almost has created a forcing function of diving into your creativity. And obviously you got some curiosity in you. So you know, you're able to push those limits a little bit, but, um, I've found one of the main things is just the proximity of the whole thing. Like you put yourself amongst people that are creating or being creative. It kind of just rubs off. And you, <laughs> you know, even if you think, thought you weren't a creator, it just kind of starts rubbing off and you're like, Oh, well, I'll go try that. For sure. Um, Nick obviously creates a ton of stuff. Uh, so being around him and seeing the way he writes things or like hides messages subliminally. Um, and then he also has uh, a lot of connections with, you know, people in the real world. So he meets people from like Pixar, for example, and then he'll be like, this is what I learned today. Or like, this is what I actually already knew, but I forgot. And he, he's kind of just gives us those little like tidbits to um, things that could relate to storytelling. And so, or even character development. And so just reading his insights of the day or like what his normal days are like can be really <laughs> helpful to uh, creating your own stuff. And then obviously uh, Doc Kev has created a ton of articles and we always call him like the medium God and stuff like that. So uh, me being even closer to him personally, not just like as, a, as from the team, but like as like a friend and like real life um, acquaintance, we probably talk a lot more too one-on-one. -on -one. And so I'll use him for like storyboarding or ideas or, and he's really good at uh, kind of understanding the narrative and like taking things that Nick says and like really keeping that vision in mind when creating stuff. And I'm not so good at that. So it's helpful to have him as like almost like my editor. So I'd be like, oh, I've got all these cool ideas. What do you think? And he's like, mm, that doesn't really fit. Or like, maybe we could like word it this way to make it fit. So it's really useful to have, you know, the other team members around to help guide you. Otherwise this would definitely be different. <laughs> Yeah, like just the flow of everything, like, um, you know, with stories or with creating, it's kind of what do you want the listener or the, you know, the customer or whoever to like, what's their journey going to be? You know, you have mm -hmm. this big grand vision, but if you start plunking in pieces from the end at the middle and like, how does it all flow together? And is that, is that conducive to a, you know, a nice flowing journey? That's definitely one thing that, um, that I struggle with as well. It's just like, ah, I just want to tell it all, but <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, I'm sure you've heard Nick also say to like uh, kind of work in like increments, like not to mm -hmm. try to like do everything all at once. Um, and so it's interesting because it can go both ways when it comes to storytelling. Cause if uh, you kind of work in increments, uh, you may not, keep the end story well in mind and vice versa right like if you have too much of like an end story then you're kind of stuck in like you, this is the path that you have to go to so this it's interesting to try to find that balance of like all right let's work like one phase at a time versus like make sure everything um actually has like an end goal that makes sense and all that stuff mm -hmm. and that would mm -hmm. it to you yeah and even like after you've developed you know, say you were working on the water puzzle and it kind of flowed out and then developed. And now you're all of a sudden, well, if I adjust this wood puzzle, then it'll fit better with the ending. And, you know, right. it's just the whole creation of the story. And that's, that's kind of the fun part. Like, um, I started writing and I just dropped my first Substack article and, and I'm hoping to make that more of a, a storytelling journey with like lessons kind of tucked in there that maybe the reader won't even notice, but they're in there. And just, um, I have this kind of end goal in mind, but just as each story comes out, who knows what's going to happen. But, um, 
but yeah, it's just starting with that end vision and then just like little micro steps, you know, micro stepping right. your way through it. <laughs> yeah. And um, it's interesting. You kind of made me think of two things too. So uh, one example is that have you guys, you guys know what mid journey is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's like the AI images and stuff like that. And so Kev has one of those accounts and actually uses that to create a lot of the images that you see uh, throughout the Operation Jailbreak. Um, and a lot of times what we'll do is we'll like kind of have like a story and then enter in some parameters for AI to create the images to fit the story. But then sometimes the images that come out are really different than what we expected or really cool in, in certain ways. And so we'll actually change the story a little bit to even fit the AI images, even though the images were supposed to fit the original story. So um, it, it, again, two things, it's really cool to um, be able to kind of change things up uh, when, depending on the situation, um, but also making sure to be able to stay fluid and stuff like that it keeps things fun. That was actually one of my questions I had wrote down is like, how the heck are you guys creating all these cool images? Like I knew it was probably kind of mid journey, but like what were the prompts? And because some of the images come out and it's like, whoa, that is like epically cool. <laughs> you know, and so I can see why if that image popped up, you're like, okay, I'm adjusting the story to fit this image because it's epic. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's pretty cool. Mid journey they create these images like almost instantaneously. So really gets rid of a lot of the like artist necessity, which is maybe something um, that would be cool to have more of in the future. Like actual, uh, we have a couple artists um, that help us out for a lot of this stuff, but like some more dedicated artists for stuff like this would be really awesome. But mm -hmm. until then these AI created images are like really high quality. Like we're not like, um, what is it called? We're not, uh, like settling by any means, right? So they're pretty much instantaneous. So that takes a lot of the time out of it. And what's great too, is that there's no like copyright for it. So mm -hmm. you're legally allowed to like publish any images that you generate from these AI uh, prompts, which is pretty cool. Um, Cause obviously we don't want to <laughs> do anything illegal. Um, and then from a prompt perspective, let me just see if I can find something. So for one time, I just searched like cave because I remember that was like one of the things that the images were. And I wrote a drab little cave, difficult to see at first glance whilst hidden beneath the shade of the surrounding forest. <laughs> <laughs> and AI yeah, just generates whatever. And then sometimes we'll like refine things because like, oh, maybe that was like not exactly how I intended them to understand the adjectives or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Now... <laughs> So you're using AI for the images. Are you using any kind of like AI writer for the story as well? Or is that all just, you know, you guys just writing and going back and forth? Uh, so definitely the first, so all of Pup Puzzle and like maybe the first half of Operation Jailbreak or more was like, I didn't even like know anything about AI at all at that <laughs> point, at least from yeah. a chat perspective. And then yeah. chat kind of came up uh, pretty hard as like, being really trendy and stuff like that and so i was like oh whatever it's free let me just see what happens and so more recently in the last maybe like two or three phases um maybe even a couple more i, I definitely started to use chat gpt a little bit especially uh if i was either completely like blank and had like no idea then i might just say like write something about like wolf pups going on a journey into a forest and looking for like treasure or something and then obviously that would be super um, general and like not really fitting the narrative of what we, um, of the previous stories, but at least it gives me like some template or something. Cause I think um, being able to edit and stuff like that, I'm probably better at than just like blank story creation, mm -hmm. at least initially um, versus maybe I have some kind of like, general storyline that I kind of have written out, but I want it to be like refined or like, how do I say other words like this? Um, mm -hmm. Then I would do that. Also, I used chat GPT a lot for the crossword puzzle. I don't know if you guys remember that. Oh, but yeah, like, that was a good one. Um, or even like some of the riddles or like poems, I'll look for like rhymes or like things that start with this letter, but end with this or whatever. And then chat GPT can help me out with stuff like that. 
yeah, yeah. The whole AI boom has been crazy to be a part of. Um, right. I I don't know if I I don't know if I would have been as in touch with it by not being in this ecosystem and being kind of in a creative mode. Cause like, I'll talk to about AI to, you know, my wife or, or <laughs> like some of my friends and they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, what is this AI stuff? So they don't even know about like the mid journeys and that and the chat GPTs, but they are very cool tools to, like you said, almost just spark the creative juices or get some filler that you didn't know quite how to place or whatever. So um, yeah, it's, it's been I try to keep myself from not going too far down the rabbit hole though. Cause you can get sucked into like hours of just playing with these things. And you're like, well, that didn't even solve my problem. I probably could have wrote the article by now, <laughs> but, right. but, but yeah, it's, they are, uh, they are good if you can use them for what they're like to ac- uh, accent your creative ability. <laughs> right. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Nick talked about that uh, or maybe Howard. Yeah. Um, Howard. Yeah. That was really talking good about like not, doing the job for you um but getting rid of the like mundane parts or whatever yeah. um using it to make you better you know not to do it for you because then you're replaceable right mm-hmm. and even like he mentioned he just recently talked with um scott uh, perry on creative on purpose there and one of the things he said was you don't want ai to take away your spark like you, the thing that you're best good at don't use ai for that like <laughs> right yeah so that that was a good one um yeah so then we go to the puzzles like you mentioned the crossword puzzle but then there's all the the intricacies and the flow of the puzzles like like did you play D D when you were younger or you know <laughs> did you, like did you have any of that creative spark from like when you were younger um i think i played D D like once and it was like only for like a few hours and I'm sure real D&D games like take way longer than that if not days or weeks or whatever <laughs> uh, so for the most part uh, I don't think I would say I'd, I would be qualified as a D&D player um, I can definitely see how that like on the spot storytelling to go with like the flow of the game and stuff would have been really useful skill to have for both <laughs> that and this um, but yeah I don't know like uh, I guess I'm pretty random. <laughs> like, yeah. so I actually have ADHD. I'm like diagnosed and prescribed and all that stuff. So I think maybe just the crazy tangents that happen in my head, um, all just come up with these crazy ideas on the spot. And then again, just like having Kevin to like, kind of like maybe line all my crazy angles and tangents into like a, <laughs> a flow. Um, yeah. and then somehow it works. I definitely think there's a lot of room for improvement still. So there, there's a lot of things I want to do moving forward. So, something that you also mentioned, you kind of talked about how uh, you want to put like lessons and stuff like that into the storytelling. And I want to, I definitely want to incorporate some more of that. And it obviously would be woofed in narrative related. So things that you might learn from like Master Key of Wisdom, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the things I tried to tie in so far, but maybe weren't necessarily like lessons per se. Um, but I would like drop adjectives that were related to like specific wolf pup elements. So like if you know we have the Zen like wellness. So for example, like uh, a balanced wood would be like relaxed and harmonious or merciful and unselfish. So I would take mm-hmm. those themes and try to write that either into like the requirement to look at the page. So like you must be balanced and unselfish to walk this path or whatever. Um, yeah. Or I would try to make the storyline uh, related to those kind of traits that were specific to the elements. Um, but I think, like you said, the lessons being learned, I think that would really take things to the next level. And actually the, you may not, have realized this, but the doc has six word updates are actually going to be like a huge progression of character development as well. So um, something that Nick also helped teach us to <laughs> yeah. make storytelling next level, something he, I think he also uh, brought up from Pixar. So it's kind of my next step. Yeah. Yeah. There's the tie back into master key and um, you know, this jailbreak and pup to no good is just mm-hmm. a, a good real mesh back and forth. So you can play, you can play off those. Um, and with the more input that um, Grandmaster Mike is giving through 
uh, master key, you know, that just gives you ideas, sparks the sparks the oh, I could tie that into the story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of the stuff, like you said, just happens on the fly. So like a new master key might come out or a new episode of master key might come out. And I'm like, oh, nice. That I could totally use that. Right. Yeah. So that that's kind of one of the fun things about being around all these other people and stuff. Um, you just learn new stuff all the time and then sometimes it applies. Okay. So you just mentioned the next part. When, when are we expecting, like, what are we, what's the, there's usually a trigger point for the next step. Like that's one thing I've learned from Nick is we, if we don't, we need to hit this point before the next thing is released or whatever. So um, like, what's the next step and where do we go from here? Yeah. So um, the next step, I guess I can drop the name. The next piece will be called the world fragments. Um, so similarly, like you'll have to forge some pentagrams into the world fragment. Um, we're pretty close to the end. I think there's only, including the world fragment, there's only three more phases, including the grandmaster key phase. And we are hoping to release the world fragment uh, by next Friday. Uh, that was kind of a timing thing with like inside the den podcast being this week. Um, and then the next week I'd probably have another put to no good call and do a live reveal of the next phase, um, kind of giving people who attend these calls first dibs or a head start on starting the puzzles and stuff before everyone else. Um, and also from a pentagram being forged perspective, we're at about we actually broke 300 today, which is kind of cool because I think right. yesterday we were like 280 or something. And now we're at like 325 or something like that. Um, so I think we're getting pretty close to the 500 mark. Um, so I think that'd be a good um, kind of trigger for the next phase is like when we're about half of the pentagram, especially given that technically, since not all the elements have been forged, uh, we can't actually get to a thousand pentagrams at this stage anyways. Yeah, exactly. Because like, as soon as the forge fired up, then the rest of the elements and keys were kind of locked, you couldn't mint anymore. Yep. So, so yeah, if you start doing the math, you're like, Oh, okay, so we can't forge all the, the pentagrams quite yet. Um, so that's, it, it's interesting. There's, there's also that little chunk of game theory going along with yeah. um because I know people were asking, Oh, do I mint only one key and one element? Do I, I feel bad that I'm maxing out like the mint and it's like, well, you might want to max out the mint. <laughs> you know, I will, I will tell you that I definitely maxed out the mint. <laughs> yeah. If that's any uh, sign significance of what you should do. <laughs> well, when you start burning things, they disappear fast. So it's like, Oh <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Like you think about how, like the, the length of each phase of the journeys, um, and how long it took to get these keys and elements and then like instantaneously they're like oh i literally have zero elements left because now i, I forced like a couple pentagrams or whatever yeah it's kind of <laughs> yeah yeah it almost makes you think do i want these pentagrams well you might need them for the next step so <laughs> yeah so uh that kind of you kind of talked about the game theory and like whether or not to do it and stuff like that and it brings up kind of a, a cool thing. So I noticed, for example, uh, some of the elements are now on sale on OpenSea, like people are actually listing them, um, oh, yeah. which is kind of a cool thing to see. And then uh, I guess as like a little um, leak for the future, keeping in mind, what does the Grandmaster Key unlock? Like, what do you think it unlocks? what the grandmaster key unlocks yeah or like why do you want a grandmaster key well so it's pup to no good journey that's jailbreak there's always been mention of pups being captured or whatever so i don't i don't know like is it will it release more gray pups like because the, the ever elusive gray wolf <laughs> you know who knows um yeah i, I don't know will it um the one thing like to become a master collector or a grandmaster collector, you never really knew what the benefits were. But if being in this ecosystem has taught me one thing that you always be prepared, even though you might not know the end result, right. <laughs> because you sometimes can't go back and you regret it. So <laughs> for sure. 
Yeah, I definitely say, so I'm going to be really vague here. No promises. Um, I'm just kind of giving you some ideas of what things that might happen. So gray wolves, definitely, that's got to be the most obvious one. There's got to be some gray wolves that are locked up and then that got, can be free, right? That's kind of the whole yeah. premise of the Operation Jailbreak. Um, but there's definitely um, in mind some other high value assets or like treasures, more literally. So maybe not pups. Um, but uh, for an example, not saying this is going to happen, but something that we talked about previously is exclusive like merchandise, for example, mm-hmm. right? Um, so we talked about uh, Dr. Jeff Spencer, for example, he's a glass blower. Um, and so what if, for example, he made like two pieces of glass that were completely exclusive and limited and it required like, since it's we're kind of along the element of fire um, in, in theme, what if uh, it required like a grandmaster key and a fire key to be burned in order to get one of these pieces? Just, yeah. a, just an idea in saying that the type of thinking that you might be like, oh, these are the kinds of things that maybe would be available. I'm not saying that that's the actual thing or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the type of decision making you'll have to weigh when saying like, do I want a fire key anymore? Do I even need this? Should I sell it? Should I keep it for the future? Or do I? want to strive for the grandmaster key it's not easy to get right like we're talking like you would need like a hundred elements or something like a hundred of each element or something like that in order to even get one grandmaster key so it's not something that's easy to get by any means um yeah so lots of decision making <laughs> makes it fun because we all love a little uh tribulation i guess <laughs> yeah yeah, Nick has talked a fair bit over the last little bit about, you know, physical physical products that you can hold in your hand and it takes up shelf space and it just brings a whole new element into, you know, yeah, I can have an NFT, but to actually have something on your shelf like that symbolizes mm-hmm. that journey, that would be that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think a lot of what we envision the wolf den to be, I, definitely there's a lot of like web three component and whatnot. But yeah. I view the Wolf Den as like more of a fun place, right? So like, that's why we have these like storytelling, treasure hunts, um, puzzles, riddles, all that stuff. But I also think like, for example, like art and all that. So I think like merchandise, art, like really collectible stuff. I think mm-hmm. to me, that's what like is, would be the cool stuff about Wolf Den and like the types of things that people would want to be like striving to get or whatnot. Yeah, like even for example, DZP, you know, mm-hmm. I'm always keeping an eye on DZP. Like there's, I, uh, when it was first mentioned, I went onto his collection on eBay and like scrolled through pages and pages and pages of stuff that he had. And there was some cool, cool pieces out there. So um, yeah, I'm always keeping an eye on that. <laughs> yeah, that's funny that you mentioned DZP. Can I give you guys a secret? I'm actually the first winner. <laughs> I was oh, nice. really surprised. I was like, oh shit, I won. And it's kind of cool because I'm actually from Las Vegas originally. And that poster was like on the original like Las Vegas strip, I think, or like downtown Vegas. So I was like, oh, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah. 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 yeah so. Like some of the pieces that have been shown from his collection and just like skimming the surface of his collection. It, oh man, I can't even imagine what it's going to look like um moving forward for him i'm excited about that project <laughs> yeah easy is really cool i have uh, quite a few of those so yeah hoping to uh, win some more cool stuff or even getting to go like backstage on one of the things if it's like a place uh, a band that you like or something that'd be awesome yeah 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 that was uh kind of mentioned or the other day and it's like oh let me just check the calendar and all the listings of shows what's going on here <laughs> yeah 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 i think dzp really fits the theme well of wolf den of like the exclusive cool shit like including yeah. like a lot of stuff like going backstage or um art pieces that no one else can get i think that's really mm-hmm. cool yeah so um so yeah there's there's also now that we're on the ecosystem part there's um you know there's discord and twitter and youtube and telegram and um and now there's this sub stack that's going to be coming out um, I jumped on Substack and and kind of actually really like that platform. So mm-hmm. um, sometimes all the pieces, 
like you re- you really got to be conscious of what you're paying attention to <laughs> because it can be very overwhelming and and that's what i kind of like about inside the den and and stay wolfish is i'm hoping to get more efficient at curating this information and getting it, getting it out to people that are that are interested but like aren't watching every social platform mm-hmm. you know like cause sometimes things slip through the cracks and um mm-hmm. just to and even for me like it's like, oh, I got to remind people about that. And then the 10 more announcements come out and you're like, yeah, oh, I forgot about that first announcement. So, you know, it's it's been tricky, but um, luckily you guys have been awesome with announcements. And and if you go to the channels, there's always stuff that you need to catch up on. And so that I can just imagine in the background for you guys, how tricky that is to manage all that as well. Yeah, so um, again, kept, like, my mind is all over the place. So I'm terrible at stuff like that, but Kev is really good at stuff like that. I think Kev is like the perfect partner for Nick because Nick creates tons and tons and tons of stuff, like unimaginable number of content. Um, yeah. But Kev somehow like sees everything kind of, you know, uh, laid out in, in the like a line and puts everything out organized. So it's really useful to have him. But like you said, there's only so many of us and stuff can, you know, uh, slip through the cracks. So I think having community members that are really involved and helpful to kind of act as like that third person or tertiary kind of like layer to Mm -hmm. really help compile things in ways that are maybe like digestible to other people that um, we missed or just catching those like small things that we missed. Um, It's really useful. So we appreciate people like you a lot. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And that's the, you know, that's the one thing. There's been a lot of, a lot of people that step out and contribute and create even in their own circles um, that I'm mm-hmm. now keeping an eye on and you can see pieces coming out through them. And, and it's very cool. Like just to see the, you know, the sp- spider web going out. Um, and, and this is just the beginning. Like I, I hate to use the web three we're early, but, <laughs> but it just, it's, it feels like everything's just picking up steam and we've been, you know, it's two years or so in we've, the ecosystem has kind of went through multiple iterations and adjustments and, and rebuilds, but they've all been very beneficial for each direction. You know, it kind of gives you a, gives you a choice and a chance to focus on what is important to you or whatever. So yeah, it's all been good. And is this the last one? No, probably not. (laughs) Like, you know, as more information comes in, it'll reiterate again, but um but yeah, it's, it's, it's cool to see it all just growing outwards. Yeah. Um, you bring up a good point. I actually think the most ideal state of the wolf den is kind of like us coming out with this content and stuff is really cool and all that. But I think really what we're probably trying to do is to inspire other people. Right. So us kind of, making these stories or puzzles or whatever is really just laying out a framework Mm -hmm. um, so that other people can find their creative selves. Right. Um, So for example, like you created the pup puzzle pass, right? So like, can you tell me a little bit about that inspiration and like how that came to be like, yeah. Yeah. Like that, that pup puzzle pass was because I needed a place to curate the information. I was like, uh, as, it, as, <laughs> as it was going on, I was just gathering all the links and like, you know, making notes of all the, all the puzzles. And then I was like, people started asking questions and, and then I, I was like, ah, I can maybe be creative. And so I started like throwing some graphics on and all of a sudden it was turning into an article. And, and um, at the time me and Jake were kind of throwing around an idea about releasing an inside the den nft kind of for some of the stuff we had in mind and i was like well let's just try this out first like let's just you know try something that's kind of just small and we can micro step into launching an nft kind of thing and so that puzzle pass kind of fit the bill of of um what i was already doing i was already following the puzzle so it was like oh i'll just kind of curate this information kind of too long don't read it like tldr it down into yeah. consumable format and uh, and and hopefully drive a little bit of engagement like that's what i was trying to do was spark the people that were like you know on the fringe of ah, i got a wolf pup but how do i get into this puzzle and what what's all these things and well here's the answers like go can go 
mint one, you know, like yeah. <laughs> that's what I was hoping to do is just kind of spark some interest from other people as well to like dive into the story because that was another thing. The, the story was incredible. I wanted to show off your guys' work, like come check this out. Like this is creative. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was a whole thing and um, yeah, it turned out pretty good. There's, I haven't checked recently how many people minted, but I was, uh, I was getting some messages like, when's it coming out? <laughs> I need the answers. I need to mint my, mint my keys. So um, yeah, it was, it was fun. Yeah. So I think that kind of highlights something interesting is that or and even difficult from my perspective of creation is that there's definitely kind of two audiences or maybe like more gradients than that. But like distinctly, there's the ones who are probably really good at figuring out this stuff um, and maybe need just a few hints here and there versus the ones who are like, what the hell are you even talking about? <clears throat> And so it's uh, at the last Pup No Good Call, I realized, oh, yeah, like, you know, there's not technically one winner in this, right? So, like, I can be a little bit more liberal with hints. Mm -hmm. um, and so I got really liberal and got some feedback that, oh, man, we really <laughs> finished this in, like, an hour or two hours. So maybe less hints. Um, so that balance of, like, trying to meet both groups is kind of difficult. But mm -hmm. then you actually offer this like great solution of like, oh, I can actually keep it pretty hard and give pretty minimal hints. And then so that I don't kind of like give spoilers, people have the option to like buy a pass if they want to, which then gives them the answer so that only the people who don't really want to like spend too much time trying to figure things out um, will get those hints. And then the ones that are kind of like in the middle or towards the higher end of like, oh, no, don't tell me anything. I want to figure this out they can yeah. have like less information give, given to them. I, I know some people like the challenge, like, okay, here we go. Like, <laughs> let's see what Broven's got for us this time. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I think keep it. Yeah. You keep it as hard as you can with little hints or whatever, but um, I'll take care of the, to the easy ones. Well, it, honestly, as soon as I figured out, because I've actually had to go to some of the, the more in-depth, puzzle thinkers and be like okay like what's going on here i am stuck <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah like if anybody's listening it, we've the wolfish dads have always kind of been chatting back and forth and and we've like haven't straight up gave answers sometimes i've asked for the answer but mostly it's little hints as well like you know um no nah, have you tried this have you looked at this so um but we have a we have a little pack going on the side of like helping us through it so if you if you feel alone like there is the jailbreak channel there's the you know in discord drop in there ask your questions um if you you know need more elements to forge your pentagram maybe partner up i don't know like you know that's an option um at least to maybe get there <laughs> yeah i definitely think uh i would love it if people were able to use that discord more um freely like don't feel shy i don't think anyone here is going to like judge you or yeah. anything if you have questions um we created the channel so that you know the community can engage with each other during these things help each other out so hopefully no one is like wanting to but then holding back <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah reach out to your friends man that's like the whole point is like really to get the community together and do stuff and yeah yeah combining elements is probably going to be a necessity for the grand Master key because again there's only 10 and requires like 100 of each just to forge one so there's probably at some point people either gonna have to make the decision of like should we team up or like should i just give up and sell these or do i give up and try to buy them whatever mm -hmm. it is right so yeah. uh there's a lot of decision making in that regard too but um, definitely use your discord channels for that because most likely the people who are actually pretty involved in operation jailbreak are at least watching that channel so yeah yeah a way to reach out this this has been awesome, Broven. Um, I think it's almost time to whatever. I'm going to open up the chat and see. There's a few people on the call here. Um, I haven't really been paying attention to YouTube, but it's a brand <laughs> new channel. So 
if you guys are on this call, go subscribe, hit that smash button and the bell for the notification. Yeah. <laughs> do, my, do my YouTube call out. Um, <laughs> but but uh, so, yeah, if any of you guys like you, I think you can unmute and just ask questions now if you want. I see Jeremy here. He's a big pup to no good puzzler. Scott T, he's a puzzler. Feel Mark, free to ask and, uh, too, not just me. <laughs> what's that? I said, feel free to ask Dwayne questions too, not just me. Oh yeah, definitely. Like it's, um, I'm, I'm here for sure. You know, even going through paragraph at one point in time, I, I kind of wanted to do a little workshop on, okay, this is how you set up paragraph. This is how you connect highlight, you know, because there was a few people trying it out and, um, that's still something that's on my radar for inside the den and stay wolfish is to kind of help, help creators with those little things that might be the holdups, like the, the roadblocks, like, Oh, I don't want to learn a new platform. Well, let me help you set it up. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, my sub stack took half an hour, maybe an hour of just like playing around and clicking buttons. But to somebody that doesn't want to learn a new platform, well, here, let me set it up for you. And, and then away you go. Now you're writing <laughs> or now you're creating. Like, so I don't want that to be a block for people. Uh, you're muted, Roman. I totally just realized that. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, damn it. I'm just talking to myself. But anyways, yeah, yeah agree. <laughs> yeah. I think we're supposed to do pizza too, right? Maybe like somebody who oh, asks yeah. a, yeah. ask a question gets pizza. So let's get these questions rolling. Come on, who wants pizza tonight? If not, I'm sending it to Brovin. Oh, never mind. Nobody asked questions. We're done here. Let's go. <laughs> well, you guys are no fun today. That's all right. Engagement is hard sometimes, but it, yeah, I'm trying not to let it discourage me. Like in in um in my creation process, it's like, I'm not here for the likes and the comments and the engagement. It is nice, but, um, it, you know, people are at where they're at, like who knows what's behind this screen of, you know, <laughs> they could be just like busy somewhere else just with an earbud in. Cause I'm, I know lots of times I got an earbud tucked in and just listening along just to be, uh, just to, you know, maybe hear some hints or whatever. So, so yeah. Yeah, for sure. I definitely do that all the time where I'll be like driving to the airport or something and I just have one earbud in um, just to kind of follow along. Uh, I think we did get one question. Uh, it yeah. asked how much of this was pre-planned. Um, so I think referring to probably like Operation Jailbreak, the storyline, I'm guessing. Um, the original Pup to No Good roadmap. Yeah, so I, mm. I would say framework-wise, uh, we definitely knew how many like pieces or like NFTs and phases there were going to be. So like Grandmaster Key gets, you need this many of this to get that, and then X amount of world fragments to get to that, and then X amount of pentagrams, blah, blah, blah. So all of that has been pretty uh, solid. Um and then storyline wise, I will say some of the backstory has changed a little bit. Um, so for example, <clears throat> and not all of this is actually published, but it's kind of like a guideline for us. So recently Wolf Den kind of took on this like influencer profile picture type of uh, persona, right? So some of the storyline behind why this all happened got changed to the influencers were actually hiring these scientists to experiment on like animals or like cool, like merchandise, paraphernalia, whatever. So they could find the ultimate profile picture. Um, mm -hmm. And then Cypress Black is actually now someone who is really on track to be like one of the uh, most sought after like influencers. And so he's working like closely with the lab and stuff like that. Um, so story like that obviously changed a little bit later. But the general premise of like the lab had these high value assets, whatever reason they had them for, um, that's all been pretty solid. But like 
details, like the fine details, it all like changes along the way for sure. Yeah, yeah. How's it going, Mick? Yeah, I see some cameras now, so I'm assuming there's questions that are following. Jeremy's Jeremy's driving, so it's okay if he doesn't engage. <laughs> yeah, please be safe. <laughs> I don't, I don't have a question, but I do thank you for uh, Dwayne for doing the little cheat sheet kind of thing. Is the game and the puzzles not my thing at all? I've been thinking like maybe I can get my girlfriend interested in it because like she's all into like Lord of the Rings and the whole fantasy world. But I don't want to tell her what the end result may or may not be because that's what I'm interested in. Like, like <laughs> these exclusive prizes or stuff like yeah the prizes might be good at the end but the journey i'm like i i don't have time for this so (laughs) you're you're much more like my wife so my wife when she watches stuff and we're not together because if we're together i force her to be different she will literally just like (laughs) fast forward through it like she'll watch like 50 episodes in a day which is like physically impossible but only because she's literally skipping like all the time just fast forwarding everything she just wants to get to the end whereas i'm the exact opposite if i miss a sentence i will rewind (laughs) and she hates it so we like both hate each other and then kind of like meet somewhere in the middle (laughs) there you go awesome yeah you gotta play your game Mm -hmm. yeah it's uh it's cool when you guys give the updates of like how many have been minted and and what's the status and because like there's no fire elements somehow they all got minted out right like so so whether that was the in-demand one just because fire is cool i kind of like fire (laughs) um or or why wasn't the wood minted out or whatever and you know does it relate to the percentage of wolf pups being minted like like there's so many things um to take into account yeah, there's a mechanistic reason for why mm-hmm. that happened, but it's not super important. So I just won't delve into that. <laughs> but it's probably not so much of the like, oh, I really like fire. And that's why fire element minted out before the others. Um, there could be some component of that, of course. But I think there's a more uh, like logistical reason why that actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, very cool. Well, Scott T. Scott T. Are you wanting some pizza, man, or what? I might have to send you supper. You don't even need to pick pizza. I'll just send you delivery. Send you some Uber Eats over or something. Just because you asked some questions. And Mick, Mick, you know, you showed up. <laughs> so thank you. But I'm only sending one meal at a time. <laughs> so is this going to be a, a recurring thing now? Is Inside the Den always going to be giving dinner to somebody? Ah, geez. Do I, did I start that or what? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I do have other gifts though. Like, uh, I do have a treasury wall with some DZPs in it and some penguins and yeah. So I don't mind giving away stuff. Um, not at all. Like there's, I've kind of slowly, I always put a couple aside in the old treasury wall for things like this. So who knows what will be next, (laughs) but, uh, It seemed on Twitter, the pizza thing kind of got some traction. So I was like, ah, I'm just giving away some pizza. <laughs> yeah. The, the PPP, right? Like pub, puzzles and pizza. It flowed yeah. really well like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, this, is, this has been awesome and not bad for my first stream to YouTube. I think uh, it seemed to work. So I'll uh, go back and see how the audio was and everything. But I think that worked pretty good. Hopefully, um, if you're catching the replay and listening to this, like I said, it's a brand new YouTube channel, so go subscribe. Um, the interviews and calls I'm having will be put on there, probably like in playlists or podcasts or whatever. But also, like I mentioned, I want to start doing some workshops. So, um, you know, whether it be a creative workshop around Substack or whatever, Canva or Midjourney. I might have to pull in a mid journey pro though. Cause I'm not great. I'm not great at it. <laughs> I'll have to admit <laughs> too many prompts. <laughs> yeah. Like my prompts. I don't know whether I'm just not, I don't know. My prompts are always, I think a little too basic or something. I don't know. It just never gives me the feedback that I have in my mind. And, and maybe that's the problem is <laughs> just the disconnect from my mind to AI. <laughs> yeah. I, the way I've kind of done it has been like really, really, really detailed. And then cutting away if like 
it like messes with it too much. Mm -hmm. um, but being specific probably helps AI more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and even AI, like I've been watching the AI space and and uh, I was actually not too bad friends with um, Matt Wolf. I don't know if you anybody knows him, but he kind of blew up in the AI space and and uh, blew his YouTube channel up with AI. So I'm I'm been reaching out to him to see if I can get him to come on and just like rattle about stuff. Like he's got a pretty good story about going viral and how how tricky that was to go viral <laughs> because uh, yeah. it, all, it all seems good until you end up with a twenty thousand dollar you know bill to keep your platforms running because your volume oh, no. is through the roof like like yeah, it's he's... so so if the income doesn't catch up with your virality it's expensive to go viral like <laughs> unintended collateral damage <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah and uh if any of you guys um have requests for guests or things you want to hear like Brova knew this was perfect because you know the pentagram was coming out and next week we'll uh we'll get some more messages out about the next the next twitter space or wherever you decide to you know do it live or whatever um yeah we'll get that out there and and keep trucking along sounds great thanks for having me yeah no this has been fun so uh also, there's the event going on right now. So I'm going to jump off this Zoom call and probably log back into uh, the Guardian event for, for watching uh, that happen. I was kind of disappointed in not making it down there this week. Um, really, like those small, intimate settings. Uh, ah, I just wanted to be there because I was the last one I was at was Grey Wolf. And, and there's so many people you just like, oh, I want to talk to that person. I want to talk to that person. And then the weekend goes by and you're like, damn it <laughs> so so yeah the next one the next one for sure hopefully the next one won't be as hot yeah it's like 118 i was talking with nicole in the coffee chats this morning and she said it was like 118 down in phoenix today or something that's ridiculous yeah no thanks <laughs> <laughs> and thanks everyone else for also attending i know you had to choose between this and the guardian call so or the guardian mm -hmm. event so appreciate you guys coming out and, and like Jane said, we'll let you guys go back to the Guardian event now. Awesome. Thanks, Brovin. This has been a blast. Cheers, Cheers everybody. All right.